happy Monday. Outnumbered hey, over time. Like OT, baby. Outright. Uh, Congressman Jason Chaffetz is in the house. Which is actually his Twitter handle, Jason in the House. Jason, Jason in, in the house. house. Even though I left the house, I'm that. still Jason in the House. Huh? Now a Fox News contributor, yeah. and glad to have you with us on Outnumbered well, thank you. today. Thank you. Uh, you know, it seems like we could be on the verge of getting some stuff done on Capitol Hill or getting nothing done. Where do you fall? <sighs> well, look, it, it, again, the Healthcare, are they going to do it or not? <laughs> no, they're not going to do it by the end of September, which means they won't have the option to get to the 50 vote threshold. And I don't think the Democrats are going to let the Republicans out of the box for purely political reasons. I, I, I don't think are they, they are in the honest. box. Well, I, they are, because look, the Republicans said they were going to fix this. And when people's premiums are going up so high and so aggressively, Arizona is a very interesting test case here because you have the governor, a very conservative Governor Ducey, wanting this bill to move forward. Senator Jeff Flake's in favor of it. Now McCain's against it. And their premiums have risen more than 100 percent. And it's really hard to understand what those people in, in Arizona and all across the country are going to do. And most uh, people just don't understand why Republicans can't actually get Republicans to vote for Republican bills. Why can't they? How much? They're not Republicans. Yeah. Well, Congressman, well, that would help. Yes. How much do you think? So, w regarding the reconciliation process, how much do you think that is a factor in Republicans' inability to get health care reform done? Because you can't do things like across state lines or tort reform in it. So, how much? How much do you think that is responsible for Republicans' failure here? Look, health care at 27 percent or so of our economy is terribly complicated. I think they're going to have to go to the one-off model. I think you're going to have to find something like the medical device tax and put that up for a vote. It's already been voted on in the Senate. A lot of Democratic senators are up. Um, they're going to have to start tackling these uh, one at a time. Incrementally? I hope so. I hope they do it incrementally. but. Again, it's very hard to... Well, the, the problem with that is, and, the, and this is the only thing, because if you lose a couple of minor votes like that, yeah. then you sort of blow the whole thing. It only works if it works. Like, if you can get a couple exactly. things passed and, and build momentum, then eventually you can cobble something together that looks like real reform in health care or taxes. I love the word cobble. Uh, Miss Nanner says, I love that congressman. I am so sorry that he's not running for re-election. He was one of the few good ones. Look how many exclamation well, points you got. Well, let's make sure I get that name before we go. <laughs> yes. Miss I Nanners. wonder if I she's mean, a Utahan. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I'll ask her. Miss Nanners, where are you from? You don't have to give us too much information. That's good. Just the basics. I, um, how can you not be? That's how great to be liked by Ms. Nanners. Suzanne Cisneros on Facebook Live uh, says, My favorite man does a great job next to Gowdy. You guys are friends. We are friends with uh, Mr. Gowdy. I, I, you know, I don't take, getting more I don't take curious any responsibility day. for the hair. It's but always he is changing. A, he really is, is a great it guy. It is constantly changing. He's like the Katy Perry of the house. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know what you're going to get when he steps out of that barber shop. I will tell so him cute. you said that. I love that. Sure, <laughs> That's he's a very big honored. compliment. He comes across as a Swift. super fun guy. By the way, during the show, we were talking about NASCAR owners had individually yeah. been mm -hmm. responding to everything. NASCAR has officially put out a statement. Uh, saying sports are a unifying influence in our society, bringing people of differing backgrounds and beliefs together. Our respect for the national anthem has always been a hallmark of our pre-race events. Thanks to the sacrifices of many, we live in a country of unparalleled freedoms and countless liberties, including the right to peacefully express one's hmm. opinion. Very well stated. Very yeah, well stated. I'm seeing yeah. a lot about you know, that topic on here. Owen Henderson writes, pro athletes, football, basketball um, are like, People being sold. Wait, let me read this. Go ahead. Why Kennedy. not business partners? Okay, I was just going on. to say it's, what, it's what's very long. interesting is a lot of the people who are protesting come from military families. So it, it's not from a place of total ignorance. And Bruce Maxwell, he's the Oakland A, who took a knee during the anthem, but also uh, clutched his hat over his heart. And he comes from uh, three generations of those who have fought and served, including uh, an uncle and father who fought in Vietnam. And, you know, he's torn between his love of country and his support for the military, but also the desire for what he considers to be social justice. Mm -hmm. And I think there are interesting stories like that. And when you hear more about that and when you, when you hear informed voices like that, I think we can have a more rational discussion, even if you disagree with the manner in which they're discussing mm -hmm. it. Steve Bell, we need Jason back in Congress. Oma Uwa, hello from Dubai. Hi, Oma. Very good. Dubai. They're up. Uh, that's getting to be a little bit. Do later, buy really. me a plane yeah. ticket to come see you. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Um, no, 
I we love it when I Jason laugh. is in the house, Lucky and Mitzi. It wasn't even a pity laugh. <laughs> Jay, our laugh. senior producer, just you know, told the, me to keep it. The other talk. sort of trend I'm seeing, and some of these are so long. I mean, look how long this is. So I'm not going to read through all of these, but the basic premise is just uh, leaving politics out of football. I, I don't know. And this person kind of makes an interesting point. It doesn't matter where you go, politics is everywhere, which but is you know, what you were that, talking about, Kennedy. It's the whole, they, they're in, they're in entertainment, the Emmys, Sunday Night Football, come on. You, where, where can you go and kind of step away from it? Well, I mean, it. I can get, even I get sick. Well, and it's interesting because the president came from entertainment. But right? Kennedy and I were joking around about this because I was telling her we can't have anything nice anymore. Like there's nothing. Politics has ruined so many things that used to be fun, whether it's watching awards, whether it's even just simply watching football. And mind you, these even. things are supposed to be a reprieve from all the stressors and the division that you deal with on a daily, weekly basis. You want to be able to just sit back, watch football, drink a beer, be around your friends, and take a little break from the stressors of the week. But Listen to music instead, without having to keep a mental list of people you're supposed to hate. Yes. And I mean, now, whether an, it's an athlete or an artist and a song comes up on Spotify, now like, the list, oh, wait a second, where do they stand? on the Black Lives Matter movement. Am I supposed to hate them? It's very exotic. But there's also a bottom line problem for people that are engaging in this as well. You look at the Emmys with Stephen Colbert, which was essentially all anti-bashing uh, Trump. Uh, and I think the ratings were like one of the worst they've ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at the NFL, they've seen a sharp decline in viewership since this Colin Kaepernick stuff. Uh, started. They're also seeing a decline in viewership this season as well, and I suspect that would be that will continue. And what I'm interested in seeing, if NASCAR coming out with a statement like this, what happens to their viewership? Do they see an increase um, as a result of this as well? And so I, I think it's tough to say that there's no correlation uh, when you have seen such a drastic decline for um, the NFL. Uh, you will never see football players at the Army-Navy game take a knee. Patriot Game 76. I'm just reading from the... Mm. Do you have anything from Facebook Live? I mean, there's a lot here. A lot of people are just kind of voicing their opinions. So Ben Collins, who we've had on the show many times, he's a former Green yeah. Beret, tweeted out yesterday um, that his whole conundrum with all of this is that why do we not talk about the battlefield as much as we do about the football field? At this point, oh, like it's true. Yeah, it's we have so question. many thousands of people who are putting their lives on the line. They're fighting. They're over serving overseas. They get all the new people that are going into Afghanistan hmm. and, and have their lives on the line in South Korea and Japan and Guam. And here we've got Kim Jong Un talking about, you know, he wants to obliterate them. Yeah, why don't we salute them by standing up for the flag? If you want to protest, take it off the field. Use your celebrity. Use use your dollars, but. There's just that time when we're, we should stand united. But I think, I think a lot of Americans get frustrated when other people get away with things that they would never get away with. For instance, if someone did something that Colin Kaepernick did just in their everyday job, they could potentially get fired, you know? And so I think they look at someone like him who's making tens of millions of dollars, um, you know, doing something like this uh, during his employer's time, essentially why he's on the clock working. Well, uh, why and, now? And they, why, why not when he went to the Super Bowl? And they're barely why making not when or he or eat the mean, NFC Championship. And there, there's no way they could do that. They would get fired. So I think there's a level of frustration mm. there, um, you know, with, with seeing people behave this way. So are we seeing the free market, though? Because he can't get a job. Well, there is, a, there, there, there is, a, is that, there is, is that, are they voting on that? Just, I guess the people who could do the hiring or am I Yeah, I mean, there, that? there is an argument that there are a lot of quarterbacks who were picked up who aren't as good as Colin Kaepernick, even though, you know, his best days are obviously behind him. My, my stepdad is a lifelong 49ers fan. I was talking to him about it and he was mad at Colin Kaepernick because after uh, one read, he can't, he can't throw the ball. He's not an intelligent quarterback like some other people. And that's about football. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, I, I'm just wondering. I think it's it's an interesting And he's uh, been quiet, question. by the way. All this discussion, all that thing, I haven't seen any interviews. I'm before. sure yeah. people around him are telling him that, you know, he if you want to work. probably wants to get a job yeah. and, and realizes that this firestorm isn't going away. And well, I have a solution for him and those that want to kneel. They can go get a job in the Canadian Football League. There you go. Okay. I think that's a plausible solution play they little ball and they won't have to deal with the <laughs> so the Argonauts, the that we the have Argonauts, left, I, I know you weigh in on these riders. issues a lot, yeah. Kennedy. Where are we with free speech and all this? Because they, because these players do have a right to, if the NFL allows them. They do. They have, they have a right to free speech, certainly. Non-violent protest. Um, and, and I think, you know, 
The issue that some people have is when the president stands up and says, you should fire the SOBs, is that a, a person expressing his private opinion or is that the president of the United States saying, you know, perhaps he's going to write some executive order and use the government to curtail? Does anybody president? really think that? In this day and age, would anything surprise you? I know what surprised us. We got you in the house. Jason for in the an house. Thanks for having me. Today, thank and you thank you me. very much. Appreciate we'll see you, no, we'll see you next fun. time. Always Have fun. a great week.